Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're here to finally talk about breakthrough or breakout roles in classic film noir. I got something to say to you that you want to hear. Now this is a topic that was voted on a poll that I posted at the community page of this channel out of three different topics all having to do with film noir and again this was the one that you wanted to see first so here it is I'm very glad because this is also a topic or a particular perspective to talk about film noir that I think can be really fun so I really hope you will enjoy this one because there's really a lot to cover so I'm still listening in this case, as I was preparing to film this video and I was listing all the people I wanted to talk about, I realized that I had a lot of people that I considered that had had breakthrough or breakout performances that really impacted both film noir and their careers respectively. And it is my opinion again that it's because of how rich the style, movement or genre is. So you'll let me know by the end of this video if you think that also film noir was like a realm or like uh, an arena for breakout performances. And as I was saying before, because I had quite a very long list, what I came up with or my idea of approaching today's topic is by grouping these actors and actresses in different categories, so to speak, to cover the different situations in which I think this breakthrough performances took place. So as always needless to say, these are my personal opinions about the best breakthrough performances in classic film noir. And as per usual, this is also an excuse to once again talk about film noir and also celebrate the contribution of all these performers, of all these artists that also make us love film noir. So the first category, so to speak, that I wanted to talk to you about is one that I decided to title Young Discoveries. And there were several examples that I could think of, like Nancy Olsen in Sunset Boulevard. And a new star is born in Sunset Boulevard, Miss Nancy Olsen. Of course I love him. I always will. I'm just not in love with him anymore. A major breakthrough role in that film as Betty Schaefer and also got nominated for Best Supporting Actress that year and she was, I believe, 20 or 22 years old at that time, which is very young. Also, much like Nancy Olsen, who is a personal favorite, Colleen Gray was 22 years old, I believe, at the time of the release of Kiss of Death. And she was a really fresh face, so to speak, when she was cast for that movie, much like, again, Nancy Olsen. Again, two, I think, worthy examples, especially in the case of Colleen Gray. She went on to contribute a lot to film noir by appearing in films like Nightmare Alley, Kansas City Confidential, or The Killing. So Colleen Gray is also an actress that I'm particularly fond of. Also, it would be worth mentioning Sidney Poitier, who was only 22 when he was cast to appear in Joseph Mankiewicz, No Way Out, alongside Richard Widmark. Besides working on the stage and having appeared in short films for the army, for Sidney Poitier, this was his first credited role in a commercial feature, in this case for 20th Century Fox, and again with Richard Widmark, who in the film plays a racist character who antagonizes with the doctor that Sidney Poitier plays. In real life, though, they became close friends and they would go on to appear in two more movies together. So although Sidney's career took a formidable leap several years later, this role led, at a very young age, to being noticed and offered more substantial roles. But to me, the best breakthrough performance in this Young Discoveries category is, without a doubt, Anne Blythe in Mildred Pierce. You think because you've made a little money you can get yourself a new hair doing some expensive clothes and turn yourself into a lady? But you can't. She was only 17 years old and she was amazing as Vita Pierce, opposite John Crawford, no less, and really becoming one of the most amazing daughter fatales, if you will, of film noir. As I discussed when I made a video specifically about Mildred Pierce, this was a movie that was a mega success, both critically and commercially. Practically everyone who was involved in the film got to experience sort of a career improvement or 
a career boost for Anne Blythe. Obviously, it was her discovery as an actress after having appeared in several B musicals with Donald O'Connor, even most of them. But in this case, it was a total change of pace for her, again, playing against John Crawford, and she is absolutely fantastic. In her case, though, as I also said in that video, she didn't get to fully capitalize on the enormous success of Mildred Pierce at the time of its release in 1945 because she suffered an accident which resulted in a broken back and she had a relatively long recovery period. Still, she managed to appear in a movie like Brute Force in a small role, but truly really her most, I would say, impactful performance would be the one in Mildred Pierce, a wonderful actress that again proved very early on that she had a lot to offer and that I feel that in a way her dramatic skills were overlooked. But every time I watch Mildred Pierce, I marvel at what she's capable of doing at only 17. Always a pleasure to see in anything she appeared in. And now to another group of breakthrough performances that I decided to title as Atomic Performances. Yes, I believe you would. And that's because I have grouped several actresses who got to become legendary femme fatales for the screen and whose performances really were atomic, in my opinion. In this group, I thought of actresses like Ava Gardner in The Killers. You touch me and you will live till morning. A movie that launched also the career of Burt Lancaster, something I'll cover later on. And in her case too, she was very young. She was, I think, around 24 years old after having appeared in a series of minor films for MGM and a B product like Whistle Stop with George Raft. She got a major breakthrough with, again, her casting in The Killers. I can also think, obviously, of Lana Turner in The Postman Always Rings Twice. Frank, Frank, listen to me. I'm not what you think I am. I've made a big mistake in my life and I've got to be this way just once to fix it. Even though she had appeared for several years in films, but I believe that her part as Cora in The Postman Always Rings Twice really elevated her career. The same thing I believe could be applicable to Rita Hayworth in Gilda, again having her former breakthrough performance in Howard Hawks' Only Angels Have Wings in 1939. But I feel that the case of Rita Hayworth goes beyond just a breakthrough role. But really two performances that for me are the best breakthrough performances in this particular category of atomic or epic femme fatales, in my opinion, have to go to Jane Greer in Out of the Past and Marilyn Monroe in Niagara. In the case of Jane Greer, again, really, really young when she made this picture too. She was 22 years old. I could have perfectly talked about her in the young discovery category I just talked about, but since she looks so poised and so mature in this film, it is really hard to believe that Jane Greer was only 22 when she appeared in Out of the Past. So I think it's fair to discuss her as giving an epic performance. And although the film, again, was not a box office success at the time of its release, I think that it's fair to say that in her case, it was a breakthrough performance. She went on to appear with Mitchum again in The Big Steel, and she will forever remain one of the best femme fatales of film noir. And lastly, in this category, as I was saying, to me, one of the most amazing breakthrough performances, in this case, in terms of changing her career and her status overnight, was the performance of Marilyn Monroe in Niagara, a movie that was released in 1953, shot in Cinemascope and also in Technicolor, was a tremendous, a resounding success for 20th Century Fox. Her performance also in this film was fantastic, in my opinion. She had already shown her skills in film noir in the movie that I also discussed last November called Don't Bother to Knock and had appeared in several major movies since the beginning of the 1950s, such as The Asphalt Jungle, another film noir. Haven't you bothered me enough, you big banana head? Or All About Eve. So she again was gradually gaining more and more substantial roles and she really got to, again, blossom into superstardom with the film Niagara. And that is why I think that her performance in Niagara is one of the best breakthrough performances in film noir. 1953 was really one of her most successful years with the subsequent releases of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and How to Marry a Millionaire. 
after 1953, she was already the movie star that she has continued to be up to our days. And now we move on to another group and another division in this listing of wonderful breakthrough performances in film noir with a category that I've titled First Time's a Charm. First Time's a Charm or also It's Never Too Late to Be Successful in Film Noir. Astounding, incredible because I will be talking here about actors in particular for whom their first role in film noir proved to be a game changer in their film career, which is quite amazing in my opinion. In this category or in this division, I've grouped people that I thought of like Sidney Greenstreet in The Maltese Falcon. This was his first film, believe it or not, at 62 years old by the time it was released in 1941. Hence also the subtitle, It's Never Too Late, in this case to become a film actor because he had been prior to that a stage actor and he had appeared in many plays both in England and in the US by the time he got cast by Warner Brothers for the Maltese Falcon which led to a very successful career for almost a decade appearing in numerous very important films such as Casablanca but also appearing quite frequently in film noir in films like The Mask of Demetrios, Three Strangers or Flamingo Road. He got to appear all in all in 24 movies, nine of them alongside Peter Lorre. And again, Sidney Greenstreet got to leave a pretty indelible mark in films, so much so that as I have read, he was the inspiration behind the character of Java from Star Wars. So in Sidney Greenstreet's case, as I was saying, I think it is a wonderful example of a breakthrough performance happening later in life and also because it was his first film appearance. Also for this division, I thought of Burt Lancaster in The Killers. Also another actor that I mentioned before that I think fits the bill perfectly for this first time's a charm category. This was at the age of 33, his first, literally his first appearance in a film, as he had been an acrobat to achieve overnight success with the movie, again, like The Killers, a film that also at the time it was released was a box office and critical success. And it launched, again, as I said, the careers of Ava Gardner and Burt Lancaster. He got to become instantly a leading man, which is again, something I think extraordinary. The Killers was a personal success of producer Mark Hellinger, who wanted specifically two newcomers for The Killers. In the case of Burt Lancaster, he also got to appear the next year in a film like Jules Dassin, Brute Force, and in 1949 in a movie like Criss Cross, a favorite of mine that I have to confess I really prefer to The Killers. But in any case, he also appeared and produced a film like sweet smell of success. So for me, his noir stage or his noir movies are my favorite. But the winner, the award for first time's a charm in this celebration of breakthrough roles that this video is goes to... And now ladies and gentlemen, the moment we have all been waiting for. Richard Woodmark in Kiss of Death. I'm Tommy Udo. I don't think that you can get a more impactful performance than the one he gives as Tommy Udo. Also, obviously, his screen debut, a surprising performance. I think his success surprised everyone, himself included, back then. Because as legend has it, the director himself of Kiss of Death the veteran Henry Hathaway didn't really want Richard Widmark to start with and it was in fact Daryl Zanuck, the head of 20th Century Fox, who insisted on him and he proved to be really right in this case. His performance, even though this is not a particular substantial part, the protagonist in fact of Kiss of Death was Victor Mature, but boy Richard Widmark got away with the film, he became an overnight success, but as it often happens, something that I haven't really talked about, it really meant also for him, as for women as well, being typecast as that particular character for which he had found success. But again, when it comes to film noir contributions, absolutely, Richard Whitmark is one of the figures of film noir, and really we're talking about first time performances, the breakthrough award goes to Richard Widmark in Kiss of Death. And we're coming towards the final category or group of actors. And this is one that it's really hard for me to title. <laughs> A shocker but essentially i will be talking about actors who had had previously a career in films but who found success later on because of a performance in a film noir i like those odds 
I'll take them. But anyways, I wanted to talk about a few people here for their breakthrough performances. I'm talking here about Robert Mitchum also in Out of the Past. I was tempted to mention him alongside Jane Greer, but I think in his case, even though Out of the Past was his first starring role and he had been prior to that been given supporting parts, he was building a career after also being nominated for a Best Supporting Actor for The Story of G.I. Joe, William Wellman's The Story of G.I. Joe, released in 1945. But truly his appearance in Out of the Past also was, I think, a game changer, a breakthrough performance for his career. Thinking here also of actor Van Heflin, who had also been a stage actor in a movie like John Eager, who had appeared in supporting parts really since the beginning of the 40s, but he found a particular breakthrough with, again, his appearance in a film like Johnny Eager, so much so that he won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his part in this film. Next year, he also appeared in a film like Kid Glove Killer, also very very worth mentioning and really Van Heflin's contribution to film noir even though I think sometimes overlooked is really I think worth mentioning too with parts like The Strange Love of Martha Ivers or Act of Violence or The Prowler another personal favorite that I wanted to include in today's video there is also the case of Humphrey Bogart who had previously had a major breakthrough by being cast in the film version of the play The Petrified Forest but he he had been mostly playing supporting parts until he got cast for two films in 1941 for the Maltese Falcon and for High Sierra. His performances in those two movies also changed his status as an actor and he became the leading man that he's mostly remembered for. I could also talk here about an actor like William Holden in Sunset Boulevard, an actor who also had had a major breakthrough in 1939 by being cast in the film Gold Golden Boy, also an adaptation from a play, but whose career had reached like a dead end right before World War II and after his return from the conflict he was kind of stuck as an actor. He didn't find his footing until he was cast for Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard, a part that he really understood and that he made his own. In my opinion again another case of a major breakthrough role in a more advanced stage if you will of his career and I could also mention in this group of actors Tony Curtis with his part of Sidney Falco for Sweet Smell of success. I'd hate to take a bite of you. You're a cookie full of arsenic. <laughs> Because again, even though he was already working and was cast as leading man at Universal, his studio initially for a number of years, but he was appearing in adventure films. He had also appeared in B-movies and film noir was in fact one of his first appearances precisely in the film Criss Cross also with Burt Lancaster. Again, he had had other appearances in film noir, but it was really again sweet smell of success that I think meant a breakthrough for him, even though the film didn't perform well at the box office but still it was the first time that he received rave reviews rave critical reviews for one of his performances which leads up to what I consider the best breakthrough performance of this particular group of actors who were in a way seasoned actors is the one by Alan Ladd in This Gun for Hire released in 1942 because he had been appearing on and off in films mostly uncredited or bit parts working also on the radio and really This Gun for Hire was the result of the persistence of his wife Sue Carroll former actress, also her agent, who insisted on him, on Alan Ladd being the one cast for the part of Philip Raven in This Gun for Hire. And your timing's good. This Gun for Hire was an absolute success. It catapulted him also to superstardom alongside Veronica Lake, who had also caught the eye of the public in the film I Wanted Wings. And them together, they really became atomic and epic. As many of you would know, they went on to make foreign films together and also much like the case of Richard Widmark in Kiss of Death, Alan Ladd was in fact forebuilt behind Robert Preston, behind Veronica Lake and Laird Krager so he got I think everyone by surprise and he became an overnight success, an overnight leading man at a different stage of his life, of his career. So that is why 
also in my opinion he gave one of his most amazing performances in this gun for hire this is a film that if you haven't seen i highly recommend you to do so all right so that was all for today's video i hope that you had fun with the topic of today's video there are still some people that i thought i would mention but i didn't in the end such as clifton webb in laura or gloria graham in crossfire or robert ryan in crossfire who also got a major breakthrough with his performance being nominated for best supporting actor so i should have really have included him but anyway let's leave it as it is i hope that you enjoyed it i could again go on and on and just remake the list all over again so i'll leave it at that on my end any objections yeah if you think that i should have included someone else or there are other parts or breakthrough roles worth mentioning in film noir in classic film noir that is leave a comment down below and in any case Thank you again so much for voting. I hope that you enjoyed. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sharing the love for classic movies. And as always too, take care, stay safe, and see you all soon in my next video. Bye. We have a category that I've titled, I don't remember the title, one second. Kids director, kids directors. <laughs>